Good evening and welcome to At Issue. I'm Twyla Young. What you just saw was the beginning of a dance concert at Miller Junior High School in Marshalltown. The event was a high point of that community's involvement a few weeks ago in the Artist in the Schools program. Artist in the Schools is a project of the Iowa Arts Council. What that project does is to bring professional producing artists into a school system for a short period of time. The theory is that contact with such individuals broadens a student's perceptions of art and artists in a way that merely studying about that art cannot do. Now, while in the school, whether it's for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, the artist essentially continues his or her activities, whether it's songwriting, wood carving, painting, dancing, or storytelling. In addition, there are workshops, discussions, and generally a chance for the students to try their hands at whatever type of activity this artist is displaying. Artist in the schools takes on about as many forms as there are artists and schools involved. Schools join the program looking for widely divergent results, and artists have vastly different talents and activities to offer a class or a school system. But there are at least a couple of aspects that all artists in the school's residency share. Each takes planning, and each costs money. The money is spent primarily to pay the artist for his or her time. The Iowa Arts Council, using state money and money from the National Endowment for the Arts, puts two-thirds of the bill. The school system pays the other third. This evening, we're going to show you a couple of different types of artists in the schools program. One took an entire year to plan. It cost $15,000, and it lasted two weeks. The other was relatively simple to set up. It cost a couple of hundred dollars, and it lasted two days. What they have in common is that they both set out to show students, teachers, and parents that, in some way, to some extent, everyone is an artist. The Ryrie Woodbury Dance Company of Salt Lake City is a professional modern dance company which spends a good deal of its time performing in public for paying audiences, but not by any means all of its time. When Shirley Ryrie and Joanne Woodbury choose dancers for this small but popular company, they look not only for outstanding performers well-schooled at their craft, they look as well for individuals who are good teachers, who are able to communicate with children, dancers who are committed to the concept that expressive movement is possible and desirable for everyone. It is that commitment that brings this world-traveled Ryrie Woodbury Dance Company to a tiny stage in Marshalltown and to similar programs all over the country. We can dance, you can dance. Bodies can dance. I'm Phyllis. 
The heart of the Artist in the Schools program is the contact between artist and student. With a group like Ryrie Woodbury, the residency is extended, in this case a couple of weeks long. And there is at least some contact by way of this performance, an assembly, or a workshop with hundreds of students from the school system. But there is also a core group who take part in extensive sessions and who perform in public with the dancers. In Marshalltown, there were 32 students in the core group, including sixth graders David Knox and Jill Dannon. How did working with these dancers and stuff make you feel? Fun. Fun. Joyful, feel good, and all emotional. It was a lot of fun, and they worked with us, and we got to do tapes, and there was records, and we got to dance to them, and go down the stage, and go into the audience, and do a lot of weird things. Had you ever done anything like this before, Jill? No, not at all. You had had dancing lessons of yeah, some sort? Yeah, ballet, before. but not much, just like a year or two. Was this a, was this a different kind of movement than you studied in your dancing? Mm-hmm. More like rock and roll, and you did shapes and a whole lot of different things. Had you ever done anything like it, Dan? Just one time with the with the uh, the the school. What what sort of thing was that? Mm, like the hustle, rock and roll stuff. Like so, it was like dancing. kind of just dancing. Yeah, moving, stretching. Well, now you told me that they that they. Um, had you do different kinds of shapes. What did they say to you? What kinds of things did they say to you, and how did they treat you to get you to do all these different things with your body? Uh, we just took our own shape, and they agreed with it, or kind of changed it. And like we took, we laid on the floor and did shape, or we stood up, or medium, high, low. Had you ever talked to a dancer before? No, first time. What'd you expect? I mean, your teachers and everything had told you that these people were coming. They were fun. What'd I expect? Uh, well, I was all excited. Uh, While they were here working with you, did you find out anything that you could do that you didn't know you could do? Yeah, move in such fastness. <laughs> Like shoveling, going, going like that, and, and such. Well, like time, you can do it slow, and then. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, it, it was just kind of fun and joyful, and, and it's fun working with the dancers, kind of. Well, you can talk. How about you? Well, they didn't sound like professionals or anything. They just regular people, and they talk to you and. And make jokes and everything. It was fun. Did that surprise you? Uh-huh. Because I thought they'd be serious and all that. They weren't. They were live and just jumping all around and like dancers. The head live jumping around dancer is Shirley Ryrie. What, what kind of motivation would get a company like yours involved in a program like Artists in the School? Well, it's a very satisfying program. Um, Artists in the schools usually last for two weeks, so you have time to get into a community, get to know the people. Uh, everybody's revved up before you come, so they've been working for about a year to get the, the residency established, and by the time you get there, everybody's very excited. So things happen. If you're in a class working with children and they've just seen you in a performance such as this one, uh, they want to do their best. You know, they come bringing a lot of energy, and because of that, you have many more uh, meaningful experiences. You have uh, life-changing things happen to teachers or to children that you're working with, and it's, it's very satisfying. What about to y'all? What kind of an effect does this kind of experience have on your own, your on own work, your own creative Well, uh, one thing, it allows us to perform a great deal. And we're all dancers, and we love performance. If, if you're not touring, you're limited how many performances you can give. If you stayed in, like if we stayed in Salt Lake, we give maybe three seasons a year, but there's a lot of time in between when you're not performing. So when we're on the road, we're performing every week. And this is, uh, of course, you grow as a dancer, you become better and better, more proficient, you understand your craft, and you have the feedback, the give and take of working for an audience, which is very exciting.
Parker. My guess is that a lot of the kids who saw you performing today, maybe it's the first time that they've ever yes. seen professional uh -huh. dancers. Oftentimes, we're pioneers in the community, the first, the first modern dance. Well, uh, the thing that happens, of course, this part of the program is to show dance as an art form. And then when we get in the classroom, we are, are working with them themselves. So they learn to express themselves, and they use to, learn to use movement as a tool for that expression. And movement is very readily available to all of us. Um, the younger we are, the more available it is. So young children, that movement is there ready to express, and uh, they begin to have a wonderful feeling about themselves. They, they have success, they, they do what they saw us do, and, uh, and they're excited about it, and they feel good about themselves, and they feel good about each other because we do a lot of uh, socializing things in the dance. We do things with partners and with groups, and there's a lot of planning, creative problem solving. So there's a lot of uh, positive feedback that comes through working with dance and movement and this is what happens to the children. They, we see images change. We see children who are shy suddenly come out and, and begin to be involved. We see children who haven't been very interested suddenly become very interested in school because this is happening there and, and they have uh, success at this, you see. And it, it sometimes will turn a kid in around so that he gets a, a good feeling about himself and then wants to learn about other things as well. A lot of your program today was a, a sharing kind of thing with the audience. At one point, uh, you had the, the students wiggle their hands and yes. wiggle their heads uh -huh. and wiggle their shoulders. They're very excited about that. And at one point, some of your dancers come into the audience and get ideas for an improvisational dance from them. Um, that worked very smoothly today, in and out of the audience. We do that so the audience will become part of us. So they will feel that they are involved in the performance, that this is their performance as well as ours. And uh, by that give and take, they become much more warm to what they're seeing, they're more receptive to it, they enter in, they become part of it. The students became a part of it here by supplying the ideas and excitement for an improvisational dance. And they became part of it when they discovered that dancing means using not only your body, but your imagination. For instance, who ever heard of dancing with crutches?
But it doesn't necessarily take a year's worth of planning, thousands of dollars, and a whole dance troupe from Salt Lake City to have an artist in the schools program. There are less complicated and less expensive ways to do it, as we'll see in a moment. Green Elementary School, serving the north central Iowa town of Green, population about 2,000, is having some funding problems. That's not unusual in small Iowa towns these days, but it causes difficulties nonetheless. The shortage of funds in this case has meant that Green Elementary had to give up its full-time art teacher. Oh, these students still have regular art classes, but no longer are those classes taught by someone who is primed with new ideas about visual and tactile creativity. Part of the answer to Green's dilemma is Guy Watke. Watke is a working potter from central Iowa. He lives on a farm and makes his living selling the pots and pitchers, plates and piggy banks that he makes in his pottery studio. But he is also a certified art education teacher, a skilled craftsman who plain likes kids. The artist in the school's program provides, according to him, a chance to maintain contact with young people, a relief from the loneliness of the studio, and at least some supplemental income. For the students, there is a chance to see a pot thrown, a chance to talk to someone who makes things, beautiful things, with his hands, and a chance to find out that there are common strains in our daily lives that hook us all together if only we look for them. These youngsters found out this day, for instance, that a pottery kiln is not unlike a corn dryer. That was a major moment of recognition. They also found out how a lump of clay turns into a pitcher. Okay, you have to watch. This will happen fast. I'm just pressing straight down in the center to within about a quarter of an inch of the bottom. All right. And I pull the bottom out, oh, a couple inches. Smooth it out, and I'll show you. I know you can't see the inside right now. So I can hold this up. You see what it looks like in there? <laughs> Neato, huh? I think so too. OK. Um, this is going to be a cylinder, and I'll turn it into a pitcher. But for right now, I'll just throw a straight-walled cylinder. It'll look about like the shape of a tin can, OK? now. You're going to have to watch. This is going to look like magic, but it's really not. All I'm doing is squeezing the clay through my fingers and forcing it up, OK? Now I'll show you what I mean. See how that's changed shape, and it's gotten a little bit thinner. Tell me what leaves that trail, that little line. OK, I see a hand up over here. What? Right, my hand or my fingers. Just leaves a trail where they've been, okay? 
Now I could get rid of those with the sponge, but I like the way they look, so I leave them there. There we go. Okay. Now I know I'm making this look very easy, but you've got to very, keep your hand very steady and very still. And it takes a lot of time and practice. So it's something, just like anything, you can't get discouraged at first. You've got to keep trying and working at it and practice, lots and lots and lots of practice. Okay, and I'll clean up the bottom. Okay. Now, what else does a pitcher need? Okay. handle. Okay, besides the handle, what does it need? All right. A pouring spout, right, okay. And how do you think I'm going to do that? You don't know? Okay. With your finger. Right, okay. Now watch. I'm going to take these two fingers and support the side of the pitcher and take this finger and pull the clay down. Okay, and there it is. The artist in the school's program has seen phenomenal growth since its introduction into Iowa six years ago, and with good reason, according to Iowa Arts Council Education Coordinator Nan Stillion. I think the creative process, the how-tos of something very tangible, is something that appeals to everybody at any age. But in the schools, uh, the fact that you have a professional who is so expert at something doing it for the kids there. They're important enough to be the audience. They are important enough to be considered worthy of learning it. And the artists treat them uh, very much as people, not as littler uh, creatures or as someone to be told what to do. The artists treat them as, to some extent, equals in the learning process. And uh, it's a, it's a how-to program to a great extent. The theory and uh, conceptual work is kept pretty much after the demonstration and the, uh, the showing of how to. So the motivation is already built into it. People need, suddenly, uh, to feel a part of something creative, I think, because so many of the creative processes that were part of daily life have been taken away from us, or not taken away, but they have dissolved as a result of a mechanized society. A lot of people would say that there are tremendous needs in our society, for remedial kinds of needs, people who don't have enough to eat, people who don't have good places to live. How in light of that do you justify spending money on public money on the arts? No, there's no question that people have to have uh, houses and food and warm places to uh, live in. But um, there is, is just a strong demand for the food for the spirit. And the uh, art, uh, creative process is something that has never been recognized as uh, an essential of life, but it is. If creativity is an essential of life, the artist in the school's program is becoming more and more popular as a vehicle for stimulating that creativity in large numbers of students. When the program began during the school year of 1971-72, four artists had contact with less than 600 people in three towns. The Iowa Arts Council that year chipped in $12,000 from a National Endowment for the Arts grant. Over the years, the state has gradually committed funds to the program, and the National Endowment's involvement has grown. During this school year, the Iowa Arts Council estimates over 100,000 persons will have contact with some 300 artists, and that somewhere in the vicinity of $200,000 will be pumped into the program statewide. According to Nan Stillian, schools are requesting more programs than the council has money to provide. But perhaps the most dramatic response has been from the students and the teachers themselves. David Els, principal of Green Elementary School, says that the presence in his school of artists like Potter Guy Wutke offer an excitement for the students, a stimulation, and ultimately a positive experience about the artist and about themselves. Richard Doyle, who coordinated the Ryrie Woodbury visit to Marshalltown, says that there is more to educating children than offering academic fundamentals. There is, he says, a need to provide experiences which develop a child's self-confidence, an opportunity for children to experience success, an atmosphere that helps bring divergent parts of a complex world into perspective in a child's mind. Art, in its myriad forms, can help to do just that. 
Now, of course, lurking around the edges of any such project is the question, is it worth it? Is it worth the time, the money, the risk of intangible results? In response to that question, one administrator with the Marshalltown Project said, come see if we're still using expressive movement as a teaching and learning tool three years from now. I'm Twyla Young. Good night.